G'day everyone, welcome to your footy feed for a Tuesday. Well, Collingwood defender Harry O'Brien has returned to the club, revealing a host of personal issues were behind his dramatic absence. The Magpies have removed O'Brien from the club's leadership group to give him time to work through those problems. Jackie Reid has our story. On the lookout for Harry O'Brien, the waiting cameras captured several magpies trickling into the club. O'Brien came alone and was keen to set the record straight. I'm going through issues that I've sort of put in the past for a long time, so including you know, a long and complicated, very complicated history of sexual abuse, suicide, depression, seeing someone get murdered, knowing who murdered that person not being able to say anything because that person will probably murder you. So I'm, I'm, I've put that, that stuff to the past and I just, you know, I, I, when time comes right, like I will open up about these issues. The extent of O'Brien's personal issues came as no surprise to the coach. Really, he's talking about issues, uh, personal issues, um, that we're fully aware of and, and that we deal with every day. O'Brien hit the track for his first training session since the club's loss to Port Adelaide in round 14. But the enormity of his admissions had reporters stunned. I get the impression that everyone thinks he's a basket case. I mean, he, he has been through some things that uh, I couldn't imagine. I couldn't imagine what that feels like. It's nearly like there's a car crash on the side of the freeway and you stop and you want to have a look at it. Harry O'Brien is a, is a decent human being. O'Brien won't take on Adelaide on Friday night and the club has already moved to ease the strain on the 26-year-old. We've removed the burden of leadership from Harry. He won't be in the leadership group um, for the remainder of the year and we'll assess that going forward beyond that. Mental health advocate Wayne Schwoss has urged the football community to rally around O'Brien. This is a young man that's dealing with some very serious issues at the moment and I think that we need to be respectful of that and perhaps football and his football club and his teammates and the support of his club is a sanctuary for him at the moment. The club reluctant to put a time frame on O'Brien's football return. Jackie Reid, afl.com.au to the day's other news now and Cyril Rioli's contract extension is the big story at Hawthorne and as we cross to Mark McGugan, he's ramped up the pressure on Lance Franklin to re-sign Mark. Yeah, that's right, Matty. The Hawks are announcing today, of course, that Cyril Rioli has signed on until the end of 2017. Great news for the club and with his signature, they have now penned new deals this year for almost all of their stars except, of course, for one and that's Lance Franklin. But Cyril had a message for his good friend Buddy. You know, I've played a lot of footy with Buddy, so, yeah, hopefully, if, you know, I've re-signed, he might, but, you know, it's up, really up to him, so. But, look, I'm, yeah, very happy that I've re-signed for another three years. On to Matters Footy, and after starting as the substitute in his comeback from a hamstring injury against Geelong last week, Rioli hopeful of avoiding the green vest against the power this weekend. Yeah, hopefully, see what the coach says. I haven't, haven't sort of gone into much this week, but... Um, yeah, hopefully I can, you know, have a good game against Port. Matty, that's all from us here at Bayswater where uh, lots of happy young Hawthorne fans and we should mention Cyril Rioli also promoting his new book, Fox Swift. It is aimed at teenagers, but I reckon it would be right up your alley, Matty. I'd say you should go and grab a copy. Good on you, Mark. Thank you for that. At Geelong, Travis Varco and Jared Rivers are both set to make their long-awaited returns from injury for Saturday's clash with Melbourne at Simmons Stadium. Yeah, we're pretty confident that they'll be available to play. There's a chance we might take the ultra-conservative um, position and, and leave them out and train them a little bit harder, but given they both play pretty decent minutes at VFL level, we're comfortable that they're OK to go. Scott denied talk the Cats would rest Tom Hawkins, who is managing a back complaint. A joint press conference ahead of the Battle of the Bridge, but Jared McVeigh and Callan Ward are keeping their distance before the fourth game between the Giants and the Swans. Oh, look, I think every, um, you know, game against, you know, your crosstown rival, there's a bit of niggle. Um, but, look, we respect the way they go about it. We know they're hard and tough young kids with a lot of talent. Uh, I think we're just worrying about the small things that we can control. Um, you know, if we can keep playing, you know, the football that we know we can play and keep improving out, you know, on the track every week, hopefully they'll take us, uh, you know, to a win. It'll be the first time the Giants have played at the SCG. Mick Malthouse may have apologised to Blues fans for the loss to Collingwood. Mm. Terribly sorry about the weekend. But Carlton legend Alex Jezelenko says it's not the coach's fault. A coach doesn't have um, a magic wand. 
the players that Carlton have got at the moment uh, are just not good enough, I don't think. Austrian-born Jezelenko has been named captain of the AFL's multicultural team of champions. And young Western Bulldog Michael Talia is the Round 15 NAB Rising Star nominee. The 20-year-old had a team-high 32 touches in the Dogs' win over the Giants. He is the younger brother of last year's winner of the award, Adelaide's Daniel Talia. And that is your footy feed for this very, very busy Tuesday. Lots to talk about and you can join the conversation with us on Twitter and on Facebook. I'm Matt Thompson. Thanks for watching. Have a great night.